Let's take a look at some sample footage from the Fujifilm X-T3. The Fujifilm X-T3 is a beautiful camera. And the feature set that this little camera is packed with for video is really impressive. 4K 60p, 10-bit 422 output via HDMI in 4K, 120 frames per second slow motion in HD, and a log picture profile which Fujifilm calls F-Log. In many ways, the Fujifilm's X-T3 checks off so many of the features that many of us want and need when we're creating content with mirrorless cameras or DSLRs. So this is going to be just a first impressions video. But if you want to see a full review, be sure to let me know and leave a comment. So most of you know, I'm a Canon shooter. So why does this camera appeal to me? 10 bit, 422 in 4K without cropping the sensor. That's the main reason. And really, that is the only reason why I rented the camera. Because I wanted to have something to compare against. As I'm sure you know, the mirrorless camera battle is heating up. Every single brand is releasing their next generation mirrorless camera. So I'm sharing my experience when shooting with the Fujifilm X-T3. Getting around the camera is actually fairly intuitive. And that's because there are so many dials and buttons around the camera body. The menu system, on the other hand, it's going to take some getting used to. As an example, it took me about 15 minutes or so just to find out how I can format my cards in the camera. So yeah, that's a little crazy. But once I got that sorted, life got a lot easier. I paired the X-T3 with the 16-55 zoom. That, by the way, is a kick-ass combination. It's a tiny footprint that packs a lot of punch. I can get really nice wide shots, and of course, I can also zoom in and get some nice telephoto shots. The autofocus works well overall. There were a couple times where I had to lock the autofocus in place where I had it so that there wouldn't be any hunting or so that the camera wouldn't decide that maybe it should focus on whatever's in the background. That tended to happen when I stacked my frame. In other words, when I would put something in the foreground, my point of interest was in the middle and then there was some additional depth. For whatever reason, the autofocus would automatically want to go right to the back, even though I would toggle the focus box to my point of interest. Another quirky thing that happened to me is that after I would press the record button, my exposure would actually change. It would drop down by about two stops. So of course, I would have to stop recording, adjust my exposure by adjusting the iris, and then clicking record again. So I'm fairly sure that this is a user issue because this is my first time shooting with the Fuji X-T3. But the images that the Fujifilm X-T3 produces are beautiful. 
and I'm really digging that Eterna picture profile. Straight out of the camera, it has what appears to be a really wide dynamic range. The Eterna picture profile does not wash out the colors. It also doesn't take the footage to that heavily stylized, hipster, low contrast, washed out, low saturation that we often see from other camera systems. The dark areas of the image, and more importantly, the blacks stay black. And I'm sure you've all seen when blacks go to that milk chocolate brown color. That is not an issue with the X-T3. The highlight protection or the highlight roll-off that Fujifilm is using in their Luma curve is really pleasing. It is definitely better or arguably the best that I've seen or have been able to get out of a mirrorless or DSLR system. But of course, you can still clip the highlights. And because they made it a point to help protect the highlights, it is easier to clip the blacks. And then there's post-production. I shot everything that you've seen so far using the H.265 codec so that I could retain the most amount of information and keep the highest quality. If I'm editing in Final Cut, I can set it to better quality and still be able to play back and edit in real time, 4K 60p, no issue. If I'm editing in Premiere, I can still play at full quality, 4K 60p, that H.265 codec, but if I scrub the head to a different part of my clip, and then I press the space bar to actually allow that to play through, there is some lag. So hopefully Adobe and Premiere get that sorted soon. Now, I primarily shoot video, but I did shoot some stills with the X-T3. And I shot those stills using that Fuji RAW. Lightroom and Photoshop are not able to read the RAW files coming out of this camera. And neither can photos on my Mac. So that meant I needed to download the Fujifilm's RAW viewer. Which by the way, that is not the converter tool. In other words, I can view the pictures, but I can't convert them to JPEG. For that, I had to download a different tool. So post-production has some room to improve. But let me tell you about the navigation on the Fujifilm website. The Fujifilm support section of their website very much reminded me of the camera's menu system. There is a lot of room for improvement. The bottom line though, the Fujifilm X-T3 is actually less expensive than my iPhone XS Max. In my opinion, the Fujifilm X-T3 is a terrific tool that produces beautiful images. As of today, September 2018, I would say that the X-T3 is the most well-rounded hybrid shooting camera on the market. And in my opinion, it is significantly better than the Sony a7 III, even though it has a Super 35 sensor. What about the GH5 or GH5S? I'll say this. We can cover comparisons in the full review video. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes. Do let me know if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'm Carlos with Media IQ, helping you compete in today's web economy. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.